to the dentist hub. This video is a brief introduction to the dental cements and we will be discussing about each type of cement in detail in the coming up videos. Dental cements are materials of multiple uses including restorations, looting and therapeutic purpose. They are generally materials of comparatively low strength but have extensive use in dentistry. The first dental cement is said to have been introduced in 1785 by Sorel who created the zinc oxide chloric cement. Cements are classified based on various aspects. According to the ISO classification, there are water-based cements which include the zinc phosphate and the glass inomer cement, the oil-based cement that include the zinc oxide eugenol and the non-eugenol cement, resin or polymer-based cements which include the resin cements or the compomers. According to the setting reaction, the cements may be classified as acid-based reaction cements, polymerizing cements, dual cure cements and tri-cure cements. The acid-based reaction cements are formulated as powder and liquid. The liquid consists of the acid and the powder is composed of base. On mixing the two, an acid-based reaction takes place resulting in a viscous paste which hardens to a solid mass. Polymerizing cements These cements set by polymerizing reaction which may be light activated or chemically activated. The examples are the resin cements. Dual and the tri-cure cements Dual cure cements set by acid-base reaction and any one of the polymerization which is the light activated or the chemically activated mechanisms. Tri-cure cements utilize all three mechanisms for hardening. Based on their application, the cements are classified into looting, basis or lining and restorative cements. Cements are used for final cementation, temporary cementation, basis, long-term restorations, temporary and intermediate restorations, for pulp therapy, obstudent or pain relief and they are also used as liners or root canal sealers. Let us now discuss about some of the general properties of cements. The strength. Most cements are comparatively weak when compared to restorative materials like amalgam and composites. Modulus of elasticity. It is the measure of stiffness of the cement. A low modulus of elasticity can result in flexing of the restoration and result in fracture. Solubility and disintegration. It determines the long-term survivability of restorations. Solubility and disintegration of the cement at the margins can eventually lead to problems like inflammation, caries, sensitivity, etc. This can be managed by proper manipulation, minimizing the exposure of the cement to the oral environment, protecting the cement during setting and the initial 24-hour period. The Film Thickness Film thickness is an important property especially for looting cements. A thinner film is more advantageous for looting. Coming to the biological properties, the pH of cement. Most cements are acidic with exceptions of zinc oxide eugenol calcium hydroxide and resin cements. Acidity of cements is higher at the time of placement but gradually decreases with time. Pulpal response. It is classified as mild, moderate or severe. High acidity can irritate and sometimes lead to irreversible pulpal damage. Pulp protection. It is carried out in deep cavities through the use of an intervening liner or base. The fluoride release. Many cements contain fluoride which is gradually released over a period of time to impart adjacent teeth structure 
with Aries resistance. Glass Anomer cement is an example of a fluoride releasing cement. Fluoride recharging is the process by which a restorative material, specifically glass ionomer cement, absorbs fluoride from a solution with a high fluoride concentration. Thank you for watching. Do like the video if you found it informative, share it with your friends and subscribe to the Dentist Hub for more updates.